A Gentleman Guide 1. Chapter 1. A Gentleman Essay Guide. Gentleman Introduction. Be a gentleman by being nice and kind. Be more quiet than loud. Have a soft, unassuming demeanor. Try not to be aggressive and loud. Present yourself as someone who cares about world problems rather than hunting or sports. Don't be fake. Try to keep a hold of your innocence or sense of natural inspiration. Try hashtag 395.52 or HF5389 at the library, hashtag 643.7 for entertaining people as in putting on a party. Good man SA1. Show her that you desire her, that she turns you on. He's a good man but can't express love. Universal cry of just about all women in happy marriages. Girls get horny too. Greatest discovery by men in the 20th century. All women want to be loved, that's their most important need in life. First they want to be loved by their fathers then they want some virile stand-up guy to take over and love them equally as well if not more so. This is the obsession and possible mental illness for many women on the planet. Women don't just want to be loved pop culture style by taking her to a movie, buying her flowers, telling her you love her then expecting her to put out in return. Women are more dreamy, naive, and idealistic. Most have this thing about unconditional love. Whereas you or I know we stand alone in the world and can be lone wolves if need be, girls tie everything meaningful in life into loving relationships with friends, family, and lovers. Women in general have this naive idealism of we are the world, we are the children thing about Kumbaya, we are united as the brother and sisterhood of humanity while most men live in the real world. We know nobody gives a damn about us unless we can do something for them, nobody's gonna give us a break just because we're pretty and nice and we know we have to work hard to get what we want so most of us, after we get over the naive idealistic liberalism of youth, learn to take care of ourselves, be territorial with what's ours and can't relate to these lovey-dovey fantasy fests a lot of girls have about everybody on the planet living in harmony with one another. This is one great chasm of differences between men and women. Men want their own little castle and domain where they're in control. Women want to go out and be friends with everybody on the planet. Women generally want to go out and have fun with other people. Guys want to sit home in their castles and do what they want especially after a long hard week of work in the real world. In matters of love, women have emotional affairs, giving their lovers their hearts and souls while to most men, even married ones, the women are interchangeable. If they look good and don't talk too much about their petty issues, the guy is happy. He doesn't care that much. This is the entire problem with love affairs for men. It's generally more physical and sexual than emotional and spiritual. The guy who wants to be a great lover has to commit to opening up the emotional spiritual pathways with his girl. Women are brainwashed by love from day one when they're taught to play house and buy dolls then all the love shows on TV and stupid women's magazines saturate their brains so much that there are very few voices out there telling them to cool it, look inward first, develop their own lives as a base before they get swept off into fantasy land but most women are stuck on some dreamy romantic image of some wonderful prince charming guy who's gonna sweep them off their feet and love them forever in never never fantasy land this is what women are playing with in the thoughts in their minds some dreamy guy who's gonna love them and take care of them your job as an upstanding guy is to love her and all that but bring her back down to earth too Try to help her get her two feet on the ground and live to develop herself not just to get married and disappear into domestic bliss forever, giving all the responsibility for her happiness to you. The other thing women can't stand is being ignored. When you ignore them simply because you're too tired working all day or go off to pursue your hobbies, they take it personally. They think you're losing interest in them, they feel left out and build it all up in melodramatic fashion in their heads. A woman has to talk, to touch bases to feel like you're on her wavelength so your best bet for peace is to make it a point to socialize with your wife for a few minutes at supper at night. Ask her a few dumb questions about the cat or the house or the latest headline, 
let her talk for a few minutes then she feels she's emotionally connected to you and you're alright for a few days until she gets that long distance feeling again and you have to reassure her that you're emotionally there by touching bases again and it never ends if you want to be in a half decent relationship. This is why most relationships are half dead now or eventually die, because the guy lives in his own little bubble rarely communicating with his girl because he's too into his own life plus the fact that guys assume silence is complacency and comfort so they assume the relationship is fine while really she's feeling ignored and unappreciated. If you think women are dumber than you, you're way off. They got it figured out doing circles around you but they just go along and play dumb. You might think you're slick for knowing what's going on and playing big, dumb dude but they're playing the same game with the sweet, innocent thing. I've read enough books written by women for women to know the real deal and they're way ahead oh you, trust me, they learned young to figure it out real quick then play dumb cause they know men don't take kindly to mouthy, know it all babes so they build up your ego because they have the sense to know that that's how they get what they want out of you. Women have a built-in judgment system where they check you out immediately upon seeing you and know in three seconds whether they're interested or not and they're good at it. They check you out for everything, baby fat on your face, fat on the chin, cheekbones, teeth, earring, receding hairline, cleanliness, shoes, etc. They're brought up to value looks so they're very aware of men's looks and grooming, particularly those of prospective suitors. If you're wearing nerdy pants, they know. If your pants are too short or your underwear is sticking out, they know. If you're single and looking, take care of yourself and the same goes if you're married. The golden rule about all people in general is talk to them about real things that matter and the goods ones will be your friends. That's all, talk tenderly and back it up with action and most women will stay except for the arrogant ones. I saw a famous 50-ish actress on TV deeply kissing her old agent who had been her friend through thick and thin. She had gone through several stormy relationships and now here she was, this glamorous lady with this nerdy looking guy but it didn't matter, she really loved him, you could tell because he was a true, supportive friend. Women know their looks start to go at 35 when the young ones turn the heads leaving them in the background so they want substance a guy who's an emotional rock of Gibraltar who's gonna stay with them as they age. The women who bank on their beauty only and have terrible personalities start to get scared as they age and find themselves alone. Take a look at the over 40 single so-called female celebrities sometimes. Older women dread being alone. Men get lonely too but they just have to go to the bar and shoot pool with some other lonely guy while single women often hide out in their homes feeling sorry for themselves. Some women can't handle it very well even though many divorced women have reported newfound feelings of freedom. They need guys more so than guys need them. It's alright for a bachelor to go out alone just to look for a good time but not for a woman. The problem is that most over 40 single women are depressed so most guys will stay clear of them because it's written all over their faces. In order to truly love a woman, you must love her for her beauty and be attracted to her but more importantly, you gotta love the lady, the real person inside and treat her like that lady all the time. When she gets older, you still love her because of her beautiful soul and don't care about those few wrinkles around her eyes. As a matter of fact, you like them. It's her, you like everything about her. That's the real way to love somebody. I've seen many reasonably successful guys out in the world trade their wives in for a younger model when they hit the midlife crisis. Women dread this en masse. It's called the First Wives Club. For all you women reading this, you gotta keep taking care of yourselves for your guy no matter how many kids you had. Men don't like fat. That's the bottom line. Stay thin out of respect for him. Good man essay too. If you're a nice guy, that's your true nature. Don't try to become more edgier in order to attract girls as I've seen some cheesy ebooks advertised on the internet say as the way to attract women. You are who you are. You can't change your essence as a human being even though virtually all young men try to be something they're not in order to present a cool, macho, tough, adventurer image to the world. You just have to live in the real world which is not all this phony crap you see in movies or music videos with skanky guys with beautiful chicks.
it's all either pretense as with the music videos where the pretty girls are hired models or coke whores or fair weather as with the chick will stay as long as there's a party but when that's over, she's gone. You will eventually attract someone like you which is what you want anyway, someone like you not some sexy looking vampy girl who thinks she's all that because she'll just use you then leave you. Get real, be yourself. Don't go out of your league because if you're a generic nice guy and some barracuda comes after you, she won't love you. She'll just use you. There are lots of girls around who use their charms to get stuff from guys then move on to the next victim and keep doing it until they get ugly at about 30 then they're screwed. Every bad boy I've ever known was a mess underneath their cool exteriors because they didn't have the most important thing, a marketable skill nor the sense of responsibility to work a regular job so they were all frustrated and angry which usually ended up getting them in jail or in a homeless shelter somehow. A woman wants you to lead but not so much as to be pushy. Do it in the spirit of fun with some spontaneity like let's go here or read the entertainment section of the newspaper then pick out some random, offbeat event to go to. It's not about doing the usual capitalist things like going to movies or playing miniature golf. It's really about feeling good together. You can do that in your room or at a free picnic site at a park. Keep it light and fun. Don't act insecure and desperate. Just listen to her and talk to her. Remember what she told you. Recount these things later. If you're going out, you always pay unless she specifically says she wants to pay. Don't overdo gifts because they make you look desperate. They make her feel obligated to you. I wear neat clothes by nature. They're not expensive. They're just not grunge. I tuck my shirt in. If you leave it hanging, it means you're either hiding fat or a sloppy person. I never have facial hair simply because I don't like it. Simple things like that tell the world you got some respect for yourself. Have your own identity. Discover it, live by it then the relationship comes after that. If you're a generic guy looking for a girl to fill up your empty life, it will never happen unless it's an empty girl because really cool chicks only go out with guys who have their own identities, do their own thing like they do. Never be a pushover. If you let a girl control you, she will and not have any respect for you at the same time. Be polite, be nice and kind but do things for her of your own free will. If she demands it, leave her. If she wants you to do something you don't really want to do like go to a fashion show, tell her the truth, that you have contempt for those bonehead type of people then make it up to her by offering to take her somewhere else that's more in keeping with your life philosophy. Don't stick with a girl if you don't really feel strong love because all these half-assed relationships either end or end up being mundane unless that's what you want, a mundane person especially if you're mundane. Even if she's pretty and smart, it doesn't necessarily mean she's right for you. She could be vain or narcissistic. Does she treat you well? Is she nice? Does she have her own identity? Can you see yourself still with her in 10 years? Is she more than just looks? I'm pretty old as I write this book at around 50. All the girls I knew who were pretty at one time are now dumpy, middle-aged frumps. Almost nobody takes care of themselves. Even the movie stars with all their money and free time still go to pot. You need somebody with more than looks. All those sexy girls I knew who were sluts and party animals back in the day have aged more horribly than everyone else because most of them smoked and became alcoholics to some extent plus they never found true love so their glory days are long gone but if you're a stable nice guy who takes care of himself you can always attract younger girls. The thing about a guy is that you can enhance your physical look by working out and enhance your status by making money so you can become more attractive as you age but you gotta live it. You can't just work a job and get fat. You have to develop yourself as an individual in order to be attractive to women who appreciate real men who are living their lives by spirit as opposed to existing and being consumer spectators. My points for a nice girl are as follows. She looks good, pleasant face, resting expression looks happy, slim body, breast size is not really that important even though men like girls with good sized breasts in general. Good pleasant personality. 
not vain, overly self-centered, or brainwashed by fashion and glamour. Not bossy or demanding like what have you done for me lately. They talk about interesting, happy things not their problems. The biggest crisis in modern society is repressed anger. Most people are angry about something. They don't reveal it to anyone but their intimates. Watch the girl to see how angry she is underneath the facade. If your girl is always measuring what she does for you versus what you do for her, that's trouble. If you sense tension like you or her feel that the relationship could break up at any time if you do the wrong thing, it will end at some point in time. I'm straightforward. I don't poke playful fun at people because I know it's really passive-aggressive behavior. There was some movie where a girl said we're alone, together. I think this is the way most relationships are because I don't see much true intimacy anywhere. Distance is normal because we're all loners stuck in our heads but if you feel really alienated like you got nothing in common, get out now. If a girl is really jealous every time another girl comes around, it means she's insecure. If two people love each other, they feel secure in the relationship. Good man SA3. It was his eyes. I felt he could see into my soul. Dreamy chick in love. I know we all dream of love, about some beautiful, gentle young lady who will sweep us off our feet and love us as much as we love her. We all dream of the walk on the beach and then she turns to you and you become one in two hearts forever. Despite all the crap you hear today about women's lib and all that other garbage, women are just as romantic as ever, just like you, they wanna be loved and want you to be corny chivalrous because it makes them feel special. Contrary to many movies, women don't want the wimpy guy who seems to get the girl over the tough, dumb guy. Women want strong guys who show their sensitivity after they get to know each other a little bit. Don't be a sensitive sap and start spewing off all your wounded, inner child crap when you meet a girl in the mistaken assumption that she will like you because you're so sensitive. Be a strong, gentle man. The woman wants you to show the passion that's inside and love her all day long. The little romantic things will get her more than that new car or all that overtime to buy the bigger house. She wants you to love her pure and simple. Hug her and kiss her like you've never hugged her before like you're letting her know that she's it for you forever. Women want a rock of Gibraltar for emotional support but they want a nice looking guy too. Take a look around at all the men you see every day. How many look like they're tuned into sex vibes meaning that they take care of themselves enough to desire to be appealing to women. There's a shortage of good looking men for all the horny ladies out there. Women like muscles. It's pre-wired into them just like we like big boobs but they're not necessarily attracted to muscle bound freaks they're attracted to men with nice, toned bodies and they don't just want a boy toy, they want a guy who's a little on the intellectual, reflective side too. The univeral constant I hear from all sectors is a well-toned, balanced phyike. The key word is balanced. Contrary to the myth, women do not go for muscle for its own sake. They like normal guys with a bit of muscle but they generally don't go for the guys who take it too far, i.e., the muscle head, bodybuilder type but at the other extreme, they don't care for flabby, ghastly looking couch potato nerds either so the point is to work out a bit and take care of yourself and get rid of beards and long sideburns. I read a survey in a magazine that asked women to choose either a Hercules or an Adonis body type as a lover. Something like 92% choose Adonis. A woman will pick a ripped body over a big, bulky one almost every time. A lot of women are intimidated by guys with really big muscles plus they think they're egotistical muscle heads in love with their bodies. Try for a thinner waistline over big muscles. Too fat or too skinny is definitely out. Just like men want feminine women, women want masculine men. Once again, it's pre-wired into us. There's something in genetics that predisposes a woman to go for a guy that has that indefinable manly quality about himself a good hunter. If you can show your manliness and be gentle about it, you will be able to attract women or keep your woman. Showing your manliness means being a stand-up guy. No matter what you feel inside, no matter how much the world has crapped on you lately, you never breathe a word of it to anyone and always show a gentle face. 
if you're feeling down, get a way to recharge your batteries. Don't stay around like most men do and snap at the people you love. Being a man means taking your responsibilities and shutting out the negative parts of life no matter how bad they are. If you meet her, that right one that's so beautiful in your eyes that you instinctively want to love her and take care of her, don't hold back. Worship her, tell her you will worship her and do it. She will love you for it. She wants you to take over where her daddy left off. Don't be lukewarm, be sizzling hot, go all the way with your charm. Don't worry about being clumsy, there's no rule book or magic formula. Do and say what you feel in your heart. When you find her, hold on to her for dear life. Put her on a pedestal and show her you love her. Pamper her. If you let her go, you might regret it later. Timing means a lot, you have to be established somewhat yourself before you can go for it. Being single and experiencing life is fine for a while but sooner or later, most people have either seen it all or realize that the only thing that really matters is to have a warm body of the opposite gender that you can count on as your total friend. I think that it's innate to want to love somebody at least as you pass 50 years old. Sure, a lot of guys play that desperado role like that song by the Eagles where you're out there chasing some macho garbage dream but after a while, you want love because it gets lonely and feels good to have someone love you back. We create poor substitutes for love, booze, sports, cars, guns, golf, poker, hanging out, etc. I can't help but think back to that old 1955 movie Marty where all those guys were hanging around trying to act cool then Marty saw through it all, realized they were just a bunch of lonely guys and went back for the girl he met. All men secretly dream of love but many are so afraid of it or so afraid to approach girls that they just play it safe and hang with the boys. During my 20s, I knew a couple of guys living in a house which was basically a hangout for local dudes. Whenever you wanted to smoke some dope or needed some company, you'd go over there, catch a buzz, play cards, talk crap, or whatever. None of these guys had girlfriends. It was either too much of a hassle for them or they just didn't care. If you want love, you gotta get over the hanging out bachelor thing. Get a dog, start going for walks in the park. Clean up, buy some new clothes. Smile. I listen to those guys on the radio sports talk shows and it sounds so ridiculous, grown men seemingly caring about some sports franchise which is big business with absolutely no emotional content whatsoever. Peel off a layer and you will see that all these guys are immature and lonely even if they're married. What a waste of valuable time. Go find someone or love your already someone instead of wasting yourself on that foolish stuff. Imagine if you spent the time that you spend watching useless sports on your girl. It'd be a great love affair. I was once a fresh-faced kid in the military and happened to be at a retirement party for a senior NCO on a naval base. This was this guy's retirement party and here were all these people he had been working with for the past few years all pulling a swift vanishing act after about half an hour leaving just him and me there all by ourselves. I don't know how old he was, in his fifties or so but we talked for a while, he told me he never had time for a wife and by the time he hit forty he said it got very lonely and it was like it was too late to find somebody by then. The truth was that by then he was unattractive, set in his ways and was probably too scared and apathetic to try anyway. He then gave me the same advice I just spewed out throughout this book, find some woman out there and worship her. Do you want to grow old alone? It's fine when you're young and have friends but when you get older, society basically rejects you so all you got is your lovey pie. Finally, women really, really go for tall men over short every time. It's been proven in countless comparative surveys asking women what they wanted in guys. If you're under 5 feet 8 inches, you've got an uphill battle so you'd better develop a mighty fine personality or make lots of money if you want to attract a real looker. Good man SA4. Look good, or at least be clean, have a healthy body, don't be fat, be kind, loving and easygoing and have some disposable income you're willing to spend. Show her it's not just about sex. It's about your love for her. 
It's about being real, true, and being a gentleman. Show the humanity in yourself. Be graceful. Be pleasant and non-threatening. All women want a show of commitment in a princess fairy tale kind of way. Treat your woman as if she's very insecure about your love for her so keep plugging away at showing her how much you love her. The best kept secret for a man to charm his wife is to do some of the housework on your own. The second best kept secret for a man to charm his wife is to let her live her own life. Don't get jealous when she goes out of the house to work or to be with her friends. The third best secret is to show your feelings. Be decent. Be gentle. Be romantic. Give her compliments and don't try to control her. They will let you lead if you do it out of love, not out of the need for dominance. Most girls live in a land of lovey-dovey hazy romance all the time while you, the guy, look at it as 10 minutes a day, after you work, play golf and rest. You have to always play the love game with them, act like you care what they're thinking about and always reassure them that you love them. If you don't talk to a girl once every two days or so, she interprets your silence as emotional distance, thinks you might not love her anymore and needs to be reassured by you touching bases with her by talking to her about anything, buying her a present, taking her out or doing something with her which is why I believe in common ground beyond sex like a hobby or a pet where you can touch bases with an external thing in a non-threatening, non-deeply intimate, casual way which is what men want. I know one couple who sit in the same room while they spend hours each working on their hobby, painting pictures. They just sit there quietly painting for hours at a time. It's kinda touching. Men don't want the pressure of having to bear their soul's love for you every two days or so but the real key is that every time you don't give her the emotional touching of bases she wants, she gets more angry and alienated. Of course, this can be solved quickly with a few minutes of deep conversation but your best bet is to be aware that she needs to feel out your true mood all the time so blab to her at supper time about some superficial topics just to subtly let her know that there's nothing deeply troubling on your mind, that you're in a good mood, that you still love her and you're not deceptively having an affair. She has to be able to read that about you every two days or so, that you're emotionally cool with her. Let her know you love her and appreciate all the work she does around the house and show her by taking her out to restaurants, movies, and parks. A woman wants a man to be hard on the outside body-wise and soft on the inside meaning gentleness and niceness. A good rule of thumb to follow is to act the way your mother and your teachers raised you to be and follow your heart and conscience in every situation. You know in your gut what's right and what's wrong and it's up to you whether you want to be a nice guy or hurt her in some way. Act like a sensitive guy who reads self-help books, watches soppy talk shows, reads psychobabble love books and tries to apply these things to real life. Rent a cabin on the lake for a romantic weekend and it will show her you care about her. Try to be like Kevin Arnold in the old sitcom The Wonder Years, the good, non-controversial kid who never did anything remotely unpleasant. Instead of criticizing her for her soppiness and concern over you, calling it insecurity, act like you really appreciate how caring she is to you. I personally don't like anyone to do too much for me or feel smothered but girls like to do things for their guys so you have to show her you like her gestures of love to you which can be difficult because it seems an attack on your masculinity, to play out this domesticated role with her. She's not trying to smother you but love you. You have to be man enough to let her in then love her back with all kinds of corny love stuff. Men want sex and a bit of loving on the side but they can get the love from their buds and their dog. Women are much more soppy. They want some guy to really care for them and understand the unique human beings they fancy themselves to be. They want a guy to get real deep into them, understanding their formative years, where they came from and who they are as people but it's an illusion in a way because a true connection is either there intuitively or not, it doesn't have much to do with deep talks but girls need them, this is their version of intimacy. You have to give it to them if you want to score. As much as you want sex, she wants deep talks with you. Neglect is a major source of hurt, you have to show her attention all the time. You're her protector, lover, and her equal as a person worthy of respect. Practice the five virtues of chivalry. Temperance, self-control. 
Courage. Love. Loyalty. Courtesy. The three A's of love are. Affection. Attention. Appreciation. The five P's of love are. Praise. Please. Protect. Provide. Pleasure. Probably the biggest rules of etiquette are to be nice all the time and always let the lady go a little bit in front of you like if you're walking, going into somewhere, etc. The lady always leads, you follow, and open doors letting her enter first. Be humble, speak with a soft voice and be real meaning be yourself, no phoniness at all. Don't beat around the bush. If you want her, tell her, show her, be soft and warm. Hug her very tightly, don't be ambivalent. Be nurturing. Talk about family values, about your desire to have a wife and kids and mean it. Tell her your dreams, what you want out of life. Let her know that she's the missing piece in your puzzle. If you're lukewarm, it will be a lukewarm romance and it will be your fault. Make it so hot that you can feel the sizzle in the echoes of your brain. Women are nurturers and problem solvers. They want to smooth everything out and live in a happy home so it often seems like they're meddling when they're just trying to make things right. Let them do their seemingly petty little things and go along with them if they want you to do trivial things like paint the bathroom, buy a new carpet or other home decor type stuff. It's their way of bringing love into the home, to try to reach their fantasy of domestic bliss, an offshoot of the home decor mindset kind of neurotic to say the least but this is the way brainwashed women in America think and most women are brainwashed by the home decor ideology even though we, as men, know it's all meaningless as to what's real in life. Women like gardening, to me mowing the lawn wastes my time so there's the conflict between men and women. Women have to be busy bodies around the house and plan events for the family while the guy just wants quiet peace so you have to come to a middle ground and participate in her little projects with her. Drive her to the gardening store. Go out with her to that social event at the church even though you don't really want to. It shows her you care about her. She's not trying to control your life, she's trying to live out her version of a happy family life. Women are adept at details. Whereas you don't care if you arrive at your cousin's wedding 10 minutes late, she does. Whereas you don't care if the bathroom sink leaks a little, she does and wants it fixed. Whereas you don't care if you run out of coffee and drink tea instead, she does and wants to buy a new jar right away. Women seem to be neurotic about trivial things. I think it's the way they're raised, the endless commercials on TV implying they're inadequate if they don't have a squeaky clean bathroom, cook the picture-perfect pot roast or try to create a special atmosphere for the holidays. Accept your girlfriend for all her trivial, neurotic behaviors and let her live them out without saying anything negative about them. Real women respect real men. A real man is someone who's tuned into himself as a human being and always tries to do the best he can every day. That means you're either working to better yourself, to better your income, better the world or spending time with your lady. It means less trivial, frivolous garbage like beer and football games. You have a vision and a plan and you're working towards it. A woman can see that and love you for it, the fact that you care about life more than just earning a paycheck. Most men don't realize that most single women out there past the age of 24 are wounded. They've been taken advantage of by some scummy guy before so the most important thing to them is an honest, faithful guy. It's really that simple. They don't particularly care if you don't have 20 inch biceps or you don't drive some red sports car, they want a nice person who will be there to talk to them and listen. If you remember only one thing in this book, remember be decent, gentle, and romantic. Money and power play a role in initially attracting a woman but you've got to have substance and integrity to keep her. These days, many women will not stay with a scuzzbag rich guy so don't get too cocky with her. If you're single and on the hunt, keep a picture of your mother and nieces and nephews if you have any in your wallet and in your house. If your date sees that, she will think you're a real nice guy. Be nice to her mother, your mother-in-law. When you meet an attractive lady, stay faithful to your wife. If you have an affair, 
your wife will probably find out one way or another. If you don't get divorced, she will probably go part crazy unable to trust you and do crazy things to try to keep your love. Your affair will hurt your entire family including your kids, your mother, and you but if it's that once in a lifetime babe, well, you have to decide. Reality is not what happens in the movies. We see tough guys, macho men, and cowboys get the girls but in the real world, reality is responsibility and responsiveness. Despite the talk on trashy TV talk shows about hot guys, most girls could care less if you go scuba diving or can bench press 300 pounds. They want a guy who's gonna be there for them as a friend and they want you to hold a steady job with a regular paycheck. Looks may count for some but that gives way to personality for virtually all but the most superficial babes out there. Most girls are aware enough to know a self-centered jerk when they see one and unless they're also superficial, weak, or just young and naive, they won't stay with a guy like that very long. If you're a good, basic man who genuinely cares for others, be yourself and you will get a steady girl soon enough. The key is simple basic respect. Be nice and be yourself. Nothing is as strong as gentleness. If you mess up, be man enough to apologize. Be nice to her relatives and friends. Be your real self, the kind of guy who wants to take a nice girl out to the park for an afternoon or out to a movie. Girls don't really ask for all that much, they just want you to be yourself underneath all the macho and smoke. Shave and wear clean clothes. Find that happy medium between your animalistic desires and being a gentleman. Be chivalrous, not chauvinistic. Add sexual dynamism and hygiene to the equation and you can't miss. A woman wants you to be confident in bed but not arrogant. All women think they're overweight. Don't criticize her looks and weight directly, be very subtle about it. Buy her a high quality exercise machine. Help her if she wants to lose weight. Promise her a vacation if she loses 20 pounds. Good man SA5. I think the most salient term I ever heard from a woman who really loved being with a guy was someone who said, he has a softness to him with a big, kind of miscavious smile on her face implying that the guy was sensual and romantic in bed. How many guys do you see around that have that sensitive softness to them, especially physically rugged guys? That's all you have to do. Be sensitive and sensual. Women these days in a western culture are not dumb, Deemer klutzes waiting passively for a guy to ask them out. Of course, women are hooked on guys and like them but gone are the days when they define their total identities by a guy and whether or not he will ask them out. The pop culture has at the very least taken the innocence from women which is good in a way and bad in a way. It's good to the extent that women aren't dumb pushovers anymore but it's bad because many are now hardened feminists too tough to let any guys get romantic with them. There has to be a reasonable middle ground in there somewhere. Girls nowadays are hip, cool, independent and don't need men even though they'd rather be with them. First off, girls have much deeper relationships with other girls than they do with men in general and much deeper relationships than men have with each other so if they're single, they've got their female friends to talk to and support them. Next, they have other interests like work, school, clothes, women's magazines, cosmetics, pop culture, feminism, etc. so they can live reasonable lives without men if need be. In fact many women can get along fine without men. They can just as easily watch pornos and use their vibrators like men do for sex and there's no shame in it. Betty Dodson, among others, have taught them that it's perfectly fine and normal to do this. Beyond this, Way more women are more likely to have sex with their girlfriends than heterosexual guys are with their buddies. So that leaves me to the main point of this article. Don't think that girls are desperate for you as a guy nor think that you can treat her like crap and she will keep coming back for more because she won't. In today's world, girls are just too independent, hip, and happy with themselves to bother with an ignorant, scuzzy guy although many still do play out the doormat complex. There has to be a middle ground between being chivalrous and romantic and being soppy and patronizing treating her like a delicate helpless china doll or too callous, treating the girl like a man because you assume she's a liberated feminist who doesn't want doors opened for her. 
The following are some points I gathered while watching a talk show about girls talking about what they wished their men knew. You might consider them when either taking a girl out on a date or being with your girl slash wife. Always be honest about your feelings. Don't lead girls on, flirting then not asking them out or going out on dates but not falling in love. Don't lie. Most women can pick out lies. Don't cheat then lie about it. Don't buy mundane or useless gifts that aren't romantic. Don't buy the usual flowers too much. If you're gonna buy clothes or lingerie, don't buy cheap stuff she will be ashamed of wearing. Don't complain about her friends. Don't always look at other girls out in public. If the guy is lost in the car, let the girl help you. Don't advertise your bodily functions which means don't belch or fart too loudly without excusing yourself or leave the room to do it. If an ex hangs around and you enable her, don't say it's all the ex's fault. If you really love your girl, you will break off all ties with the ex. Don't flirt then not ask her out. Don't assume she's a dependent flake nor a strong feminist. Take a middle ground romantic approach until you feel her out. If you see a girl you like anywhere, be a man about it. Whether she's attached or not, she will respect you more if you ask her out straight out and don't beat around the bush. Don't get drunk and slash or use booze and drugs as your way of getting romantic. Do it while you're straight. She's not a dummy. She wants romance just as much as you, you just have to be gradual, graceful, subtle, and charming about it. If the first date is a bust, don't lie and tell her you like her and will call. Either don't say anything or admit there's no connection. She feels the same way too because it takes two to connect or miss. If you have sex with her, make love, it doesn't automatically mean she expects you to marry her. Women these days can handle casual sex since that's what half the articles in frivolous women's magazines are about anyway. Don't act like you want to go out with her, telling her friends you like her then doing nothing about it. Don't be afraid to fall in love with her. Give her some space. Don't ask stupid trivial questions. Be honest if you have an STD. If having unprotected sex, get a test. Don't call too much or too late at night just because you get drunk and lonely. If her car is better than yours and she makes more money than you, don't be jealous. Love her for her. Don't ask her how many men she slept with. She will lie and say it was less than it really was. Buy her presents here and there. Don't put her down with the old negative feminine stereotypes like you cold bitch, you're on the rag, busybody, feminist lesbian, etc. Don't criticize my weight. If you think I'm too fat, don't go out with me in the first place. Don't promise great things you can't deliver on. Don't expect flowers to add a romantic mood to anything anytime. They're actually quite mundane. Don't criticize her girlfriends. Don't take pictures of her naked then show all your buddies. Don't flirt with other girls while you're out together. When you go out together, introduce her to people you come across that you know. Don't be all over her out in public to act like you own her. Tell her you miss her when you're away for more than two days. If you're gay or bi, tell her rather than marry her as a cover for your gayness. Don't talk too much about how great you are. Don't pretend to love her just to have sex. Be honest. Maybe she could use a casual sex boy toy on the side. Don't play her by pretending to love her when you don't. Don't compete with your girl to be superior and the one with the power. If you're in a relationship, be accountable. Tell her where you will be. Don't take off for days or weeks at a time. Don't ask to borrow money, the car, or anything else. Don't become a moron after the first time you have sex and any time you have sex putting some distance between you. Be more romantic and friendly. It doesn't necessarily mean marriage right away or ever. Don't try to control her. Don't say you will call and don't. If you tell her you will call after a date, do it even if just to say you had a great time, thank her and ask her out again. If the guy is still obsessed with his ex or wants to use you as his psychological study of female nature, don't let him unless you want a casual relationship too. 
don't butt into her private affairs like who she's talking to on the phone or wanting to know where she is all the time. If you cheat and are caught, don't make up stupid excuses and try to turn the tables that she's a nosy busybody. Own up to it. Don't be too possessive slash jealous. Don't lie and say you're just consoling an old friend when it's obvious you're too timing with her. Brush your teeth in the morning then kiss her. Don't fondle her too much when she's asleep unless you want her to join in. Don't ask her if she had an orgasm. She will always lie and say she did. Don't maul her like a sex object. Don't compare her to ex-girlfriends, especially in bed. Don't tell her all the things your ex did to you expecting her to do it. Girls like sex, they just don't like it with jerks. Don't go to pieces when you can't get it up. Just cuddle and lick her clit. If you can get up but can't come, don't say it's because you're not attracted to her. Just say you're really tired. Don't ask for a threesome. Don't use her lingerie for your fetishes when she's not wearing them. Don't ask for oral sex unless you give it to her too. Stay a while after sex. Don't give lame excuses for leaving like work. Take her out to fun places to help get her horny. Don't ask for deviant sex acts unless you're willing to have it done to you. Don't ask her to swallow unless you're willing to swallow your own cum too. Exploratory sex is good. Extreme sex is dangerous. Don't be really casual after sex and treat her like a casual fuck. Show some respect and romance. Don't secretly masturbate while talking to her on the phone. Don't be rough. Be gentle. Be clean before sex. Shower if you have to. Take your socks off before sex. It looks tacky. Don't try to play the tough guy with her. Don't say you can't use condoms with a lame excuse. Don't say you can pull it out in time because anybody that knows anything knows that sperm are released a few minutes before ejaculation and it just takes one to cause pregnancy. Don't ask for anal sex and say it won't hurt because it will hurt the girl until she gets used to it after several times. Don't compare her to other girls. Don't ask her how your performance compared. Don't ask her what kind of guy she likes. If she doesn't like you, she will say not you. Don't go fishing for compliments. Don't make dates then cancel at the last minute. Don't blab about your relationship to other people. Don't get all hot and bothered about being smothered when the girl is just trying to be friendly and loving. If a girl is on her period, don't push sex unless she wants it. When making love, act interested, cuddle, do foreplay and afterplay. Don't have the TV on unless it's a porno movie geared for the two of you and not just for his fetish. Don't ask to videotape your sex sessions unless you know her well. Don't insult her about her body, sexual style, or by saying she's not sexy or wet enough. Don't call her demeaning names like babe or hon unless you know her well. Don't call her another women's name. Good man SA6. Write a love letter to her every year on her birthday. You could have animosity to women hidden away inside of you based on less than desirable relationships with your mother and slash or sisters when you were a kid or getting rejected by girls in the dating game when you were younger and now you subconsciously take it out on your wife. Plenty of men who secretly and subconsciously hate women get married then she becomes the punching bag for their anger. Plenty of men have contempt for women because they often seem like a bunch of frivolous, Self-centered airheads with no scope of the reality of life that men have to live in out in the workforce. If you're in a wrong relationship and you intuitively know it, it's better to divorce now as quickly as possible rather than try to fix it or stay together because if you're not soulmates to start out with, it will never be right no matter what. It's fine to make a mistake in marriage when you're young. Learn from it, get out, develop your soul and wait until a true soulmate comes into view. A real man is a breadwinner but is not defined by his work. He's defined by his family life at home. He wants to be romantic to keep his wife thinking about him as a great fantastic lover. He doesn't pressure her for sex, he lets it unfold naturally when he's loving her. He doesn't define himself by his sexuality rather by his loving nature with his wife and kids. He's not a blamer, 
blaming his wife for his problems nor does he expect his wife to be his slave and do things for him. He looks to emotional fulfillment rather than sexual fulfillment by itself. He's not detached from his feelings. He expresses what he feels and deals with family problems promptly. He's not self-centered, stubborn, and sulky. He faces conflicts and is open to discussion with his wife as an equal. He's a spiritual person within himself who knows himself and tries for the positive in any situation. He's not a couch potato. He tries to live an equitable, active life with his partner including her emotionally with his struggles and triumphs and treating her as his worthy equal. He thinks about his wife's feelings. If he's going to be out late, he calls so she doesn't have to worry that something might have happened to him. A stand-up guy puts his family first and is always gentle with them but he doesn't over-control his relationship with them. He lets them live their own lives and develop on their own. He protects and serves them with flair not like a dull logical guy just going through the motions like following some steps out of a psychobabble self-help book. He's not vengeful. When the wife screws up, he responds with love because that's when she needs it most. He doesn't blame his wife for his problems. He quietly works to make things better. He talks rather than fights. He doesn't criticize. He's quiet and gentle, speaking with a quiet assurance in his voice that has a soothing effect on his family. If you choose to get married, you must accept the fact that your wife will age so be ready now by knowing that when it happens, you will still love her and won't seek liberation with a younger girl as so many men do. If you know you're like that, don't get married in the first place. If you want your cake and eat it too, send me a line about how you're pro-polygamy and I may use it to try to change the archaic laws about monogamy but for now, the game is monogamy. If you play by those rules, you should honor them. Don't take anything for granted. Never assume. Don't look to your wife as a mother nor as a sex object there on demand. Don't have a double standard. Don't put on a social mask and be fake with her. Be as real and honest as you can. Don't make promises you won't keep. Be a friend and a lover. Cherish the love, be true and supportive always no matter what. Don't allow the problems to drown out the true purpose, a shared life of happiness. Ride out the storm if need be then try to get happy as a couple again. Learn how to change the baby's diapers and feed her too. Don't be an absentee dad hooked on the office rather than your kids. They only grow up once. Remember the lesson from Harry Chapin's song Cats in the Cradle. He never had time for his kids then when they grew up, they never had time for him. Chivalry is great but don't baby your girl to the point of excess. Let her live her own life and do things for herself. Don't try to control her with your excessive chivalry. It's bad for her and bad for you too. Be an educated and mature guy with a balanced appreciation for your wife but not over obsession. Comfort her but don't shield her in a fantasy land. Expose her to the reality of life. Respect her differences. Don't try to change them. Love her for them and grow with them. Dependency is only good to a certain point. Each has to have their own individual identities too. Don't be a baby. Be straight with your feelings. When you don't feel like being loving, tell your wife you need some space and clear up your problems in your mind by working them through. Don't just let them hang on and feel miserable while you hope they will go away. Don't be sarcastic to your wife, especially in front of the kids. Support each other with inspiration even when times are tough, especially when they're tough. A good man doesn't smoke because it's nasty for romance when you try to kiss your wife. You don't drink so much that you're too cut to enjoy making love to your wife and don't do it too often. Buy her little gifts. You do some of the household chores. You don't badmouth her family and friends. Tell her how beautiful she is and tease her with minor romantic gestures all the time. If you screw up, you explain yourself rather than just try to ignore it and hope it will blow away because with girls, you should always clear the air by talking about it. Try to be an upstanding solid man of character rather than just a shallow breadwinner who wants sex, TV, and booze. 
Be a generous lover focused on intimacy over orgasm. Be romantic. Good Man SA7 Masculinity is being both sensitive and tough. Happiness comes from releasing my natural energy with gusto every day to set my spirit free. Anybody who doesn't live like this doesn't get it. If you believe in any god, the only thing your god wants from you is to be who you were born to be by nature, manifest the seed or potential he created you to be. You do that by knowing who you are and releasing that energy one day at a time. Your God works through you. You are his handiwork. You owe it to him to be the person he created you to be in all your uniqueness, power and beauty. The big tragedy of life nobody wants to talk about is that we pursue artificial codes of life defined for us by others as opposed to our true natures then wonder why, Despite all our material possessions, career success, status, and accolades from out there in the collective mindset we call society, we still don't feel like we're quite there. A real man and a gentleman is somewhere in the middle. He's not one-dimensionally ambitious to achieve material success in a capitalist world but he knows he has to earn a living and he does it by working hard at whatever he feels is good within himself. A gentleman is not an emotional dunce. He's friendly empathetic, helps people and shows love to his close intimates. He's not the stereotypical one-dimensional, emotionless man. He works hard to get what he wants but he's also a good guy. He's a loner for his vision most of the time but he's a team player too. I'm not suggesting that you talk in an emotional way like sensitive, gushing women do but I am suggesting that you pass out the olive branch to people you come across. It's better for you to appear friendly than to appear either neutral or antisocial. Show love through work. Work hard to help people and they'll like you and give you the money you want. Success is partially about making money but more so feeling proud of your sloth because you feel you're doing something good and worthy with your life. You are who you are the way you were born. Don't fake it by trying to be something you're not. It's not about you achieving success by somebody else's standards the standards of the world. It's about living by your own standards with your own integrity. Men have a big problem with anger. I believe it's partially because of the hormone testosterone coursing through our veins and partially because we're trained to measure ourselves by world standards and never quite measure up to that image of success constantly flaunted at us in the mass media. Anger never achieves anything but makes you look like an ass and alienates the people around you. If you get angry, Stay cool. Let it pass then figure out why you were angry. It's usually because we feel betrayed or hurt, that the world is not fair. Live with it. That's the real world. Everybody in the world has their own sob story. You don't want to hear other people's sob stories so don't talk about yours. Be strong on the inside. Become the person you were born to be. All you have to do is give honest effort day by day to honoring who oh you were born to be by nature. Be a man of action, not a depressed wimp making excuses for your pathetic, couch potato, passive life. If you feel guilty about shameful things you've done, mistakes you've made and shortcomings you have, forgive yourself and forget it all. Focus on a positive life in the future, not anything else. Don't try to control others. You can only control yourself. Talk to your wife and children about things that matter. Show affection and love to them. Honor your commitments and promises to them. Every man has problems, anxieties, and insecurities. I'm not suggesting you talk them out deeply with your spouse but let her know if you got a problem so she knows it's not her who's causing your bad mood. In order to get what you want, you must first help others get what they want. Good Man SA8 The stronger you are as an individual, the more loving and peaceful you are. Persistence and determination are the keys to success. You must know why you are doing something then you must do it with all your power. Great minds create ideas. Be the best, give your best to the world. Truly great men never gloat over their accomplishments. They simply move on to the next one. To work to help others is the greatest creed. If you do good to others, you will be successful at some point in time. There is no safety net, only opportunity. 
recognize that you're an independent individual fine with your own thoughts. Look for clarity about your life's purpose. Work towards specific goals. Never give unsolicited advice. Don't openly put other people down. Don't act like a jerk. Don't be too materialistic. Don't jump to quick conclusions about people. Be tender with loved ones. Accept people on their terms. If you feel you're doing a good thing, don't listen to what people say about you. Be productive. Work hard. Show reserve. Don't blab things out, especially if you're angry. Bite your lip. Let it pass. Don't look back. Live for the future. If you screwed up, you can't change it now so forget about it. Keep your priorities straight. Work on improving yourself. Do more work than wishful thinking. Always learn new things that can help you. Don't judge others. Focus on your own life. Don't look for fights but defend your position if you must. When you mess up, owe up to it and apologize. Live by your inner sense of accountability aka your soul. No matter what you achieve in the world, never brag, act uppity or show off. It's about what you feel within yourself. It's not about trying to make other people think you're fantastic. That's vanity. Strive to feel alright about your life right now. Be an optimist. If people criticize you like your family and your boss, keep your mouth shut, let them talk. Your reality is within yourself. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. Don't be moody. Even if you feel angry, down or frustrated, never let it show. Don't feel guilty about anything if you did not intentionally hurt anybody. If your mother found your porn stash and called you a loser, laugh and forget about it. Do what's right for you. If your wife or mother don't approve, too bad for them. Forgive everybody who ever made you feel bad in your mind and live your life honoring who you are in your soul. Be a man, your own man. Be kind and loving but set boundaries. A normal loving relationship is to give steady kindness, love, conversation, and help but not to go to either extreme. You have no qualms about doing what it takes to respect yourself as an individual and balance it out with a relationship. You're not all over the place either trying to control your spouse or being controlled by her. You're good enough if you feel the power you feel you were born to be in your soul and live by it. Be mindful and conscious of who you are as an individual. In order to make friends and influence people, smile, be a nice guy, go along with what anybody says, be like them, act like them, never criticize, never find fault, etc. Be enthusiastic and inspired about your work. Set clear goals and work on them little by little day by day. Be disciplined, work hard. Your mental attitude is everything. Keep your thoughts only on what you want out of life. Don't burden others with your personal problems. What separates the great from the average people is a sense of destiny. Your soul is the greatest source of strength in the universe. If you master yourself through self-discipline, no one will ever master you. Be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Never stop learning. Move a mountain one shovelful at a time. Dreamers are visionaries. Do not hate. It is self-destructive. The greatest revenge is to live well. You were born with a unique mission given to you by God. Your job is to make it come to pass. Keep your focus on the prize. To be successful, simply provide a useful service. The power or weakness of your mind will determine everything. For every dream, a price must be paid through hard work. A few flakes fluke out but most success stories are the result of hard work. Don't wait for opportunities. Create them. Have the courage to go for what you want rather than fear failure. Your destiny is up to you alone. Be a people person. Be friendly or at least act that way. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. What you look for is what you will find, either good or bad. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Compliment people. Be easygoing or at least act that way. Smile. 
Believe in yourself even when nobody else does. Surround yourself with positive, hard-working people in your business. A belief in yourself and persistence are the keys to success. On the road to success, you will fail. Learn from your failures. Sometimes failure will be just what you need to find true enlightenment. Try number 155 to number 158 or BF 561 and HQ 755 at the library for books on bettering yourself. Good Man SA 9 Make your family your central purpose in life and prove it by spending time with them. Otherwise why did you get married in the first place if you didn't intend to do things with them? Have a definite meaningful purpose as a positive person living out a meaningful life. Don't put too much pressure on your kids to achieve. Let them develop in their own ways. Just be there to help them with the process. Be careful with money spending it wisely on family things not wasting it on useless things like golf clubs, a big boat or things like that while the kids need new clothes. A good man is not perpetually angry that he's not where he wants to be career-wise and money-wise. He accepts his life and keeps trying, enjoying the journey and being patient when things don't work out as planned which will happen at some point in time. He's not a self-centered macho tit with a need to dominate the family and be one-dimensionally right all the time. He doesn't always have to be right, he can admit his mistakes. He can be open and soft with his wife without feeling like a sap. He can be man enough to apologize if need be. He takes care of himself by not overindulging and caring for his body. He treats his wife as an equal and picks her for the right reasons, because he loves her not just because he lusts over her. Being an upstanding guy is to face the daily responsibilities of life with toughness and maturity, be confident about your vision in life, don't give in to your weaknesses and bad habits, be stable with your family, constantly develop yourself, be moral, have some code of values, be a responsible giving servant to your family, swallow your pain and keep moving forward as a positive person, give the love in your soul and be corny enough to take it with dignity when your wife gives it back to you. If you make that pledge of love, it should follow that you make the commitment which means to give up some of your selfishness to love your wife, work with her as a team, provide for your family, do things with them, love them, be unselfish and take responsibility for the decisions you made about your family. If you can't handle family life, Think it through now so you don't blindly get married and have kids without any real strong feelings of living it out for real, loving it for the process of it. Be civil, considerate, friendly, and respectful. Make the person you're with feel like they're important. Talk but mostly listen. Simply focus your attention on pleasing him or her. When in public, shut your beeper off and don't blab too long if others can hear you. Leave enough information in your phone messages. When you have a message on someone's answering service, keep it simple, to the point, leave your name and phone number. Speak slowly enough so people can understand you. If you will be late somewhere, call and tell them. Too early can be just as bad as too late. Five minutes early is good enough. The best way to deal with unwanted romantic advances is not take the person seriously. Laugh, act dismissive. Remind her you're married or remind her that she's married. If you don't know something, don't live in ignorant bliss, ask questions. Always speak clearly and simply, no fancy words. Don't be vain or act too wise. Don't offer unsolicited advice or correct people on minor points. Don't eat or drink too much when entertaining. Pray quietly before a meal if you're with a holy roller. Treat people from other countries like people who live here. Don't gossip. Use the terms Ms. or Ma M for all females to keep it simple. Treat disabled people as normal. A lot of people don't want to know about your wife, kids, her pregnancy, what you do on the weekend, etc. So go easy about revealing your life unless the other person is sincerely interested. Most people don't want to talk about their lives so if you talk about your life to them, it makes them feel obligated to open up to you even though they don't want to. Personally, I think the world is too complicated and people too tense for jokes in general. There's too much room for the wrong interpretation. 
you can be easygoing without cracking jokes. Good man SA10. The gentleman praises others. He never criticizes. Always care for the other person's comfort more than anything else. Carry on a mature, intelligent conversation. Be chivalrous. Open doors for her, carry her books and act like a gentleman. Many feminist girls see chivalry as an insult to them. There was a three-hour right-wing radio show talking about chivalry. At the end of it, they said the bottom line is simply pay the tab even if she earns three times more money than you. It's like an unspoken message you're giving, I want to protect you and take care of you. The test of love is the way you treat her every day. Be a good guy. Be gentle, nice, and have fun with her. There's some psychobabble going around called fear syndrome in men. They say some men are afraid when it comes to holding the door or standing up for a woman entering a room because they think women will feel demeaned that you're treating them as the gentler sex as opposed to equal. It's not true. Women want a gentleman. Just be sincere and don't go overboard. If you pull into a corner store, you could go over and open her door or she could do it herself. There are limits. The conventional wisdom is if the woman asks the man to go out on a date, then she should pay, if the man asks the woman for a date, then he should pay. The gentleman always pays. Pay for dinner. Hold open a door. Walk over real quick and open the car door. Pull chairs out. Wait until she sits before you sit. Help her on with her coat. Stand up when she enters the room. If she doesn't like it or other guys snicker, ignore them. That's what you do and that's it. The right girl will appreciate it. Men have a horrible reputation for being one-dimensional people hooked on achievement while keeping their feelings in. This is true to a limited extent depending on how much you let yourself get brainwashed by your culture. You have all the sensitive feelings already inherent within you, you just have to be free enough to let them out in the open with the people you love and get off this bit about being in control all the time to let go and let yourself experience life and be a lover as you really feel inside. Get away from blind ambition, the need for control, the need for conquest in sex to be a loving mate who wants to raise noble children by doing things with them. This is what just about every woman wants from a man, to love her for her, strive for intimate contact and peaceful calm as lovers, to live by your true inner loving nature and fulfill the need for love you feel inside. A great man loves his woman but holds her accountable to live up to her righteous standard of self-respect. Many men get married and leave the woman to go off on her own as the mother of the household raising her children and many women get lazy on their husband as they give precedence to raising kids while I say there has to be a balance there. You can't demand too much from your man and then degenerate into sloppiness and apathy as you take his paycheck as though you think you deserve it. Oftentimes, a girl's coldness and indifference are her passive means of anger. She wants you to show her you love her then the coldness and anger will melt away. Women want you to reveal what's on your mind to them, your work, your plans, your fears, etc. They also want you to ask them for their feedback and to ask them to help you make important decisions like buying a new house or taking a new job rather than just doing it on your own. It makes them feel you love them enough to trust them. Women want time spent doing buddy-buddy things and time spent doing lovey-dovey, romantic, intimate things like holding hands while walking the dog then kissing under the tree in the park. Talking about anything is the elixir to the emotional connection. Listening to her gives her the chance to release all her emotional baggage thereby feeling cleansed and loved, killing two birds with one stone so to speak. If a woman tells you there's a problem, she's mad or you have to talk, it means that she's been quietly fuming about something for the past month, you haven't picked up on it and now she's past boiling so she's letting it out in order to feel sane but she's really ten times angrier than she pretends to be. There are five main rules in talking with your wife. Listen to her to let her clear her emotions. Talk to her in an emotional way about your emotions, not in a vague, business-like practical functional way but let her know how you feel in your heart. Don't dismiss her as a frivolous, high-strung, overly emotional neurotic bitch. Show her you care about what she says and treat her as your equal in the power structure. 
don't put her down or give her the silent treatment. Put her on a pedestal, act like she's the only girl you could ever love, try to be sincere about it and make her feel like you really, really love her and think she's the most special person who ever walked the planet. Show her you want her to be happy and that you appreciate her for being her, that you love her for being your wife. Give her time, go out of your way to do things with her and for her. Pay attention to her life, her moods, what she does, what her interests are. Always ask her a few stupid questions about her soap opera, the book she's reading, her job, the kids, etc. Talk to her about the latest current media issue just to exchange words because this shows you're connecting and on the same page. Don't be an antagonist by going against everything she does just to test her or spite her. Be a team player with her. You can disagree with her but don't ever ignore her. That's the cardinal sin to women. You have to show them you love them all the time. Don't be a loner and live in your own little world even if you have problems and they have nothing to do with her. You still have to keep that bridge of emotional connection open all the time even if your business is failing and you're stressed out about your poor health. You might be worried about your life going to hell when the stock market takes a dive but all she's thinking about is does he still love me, is he loving me enough lately? This is the bargain you made when you married her, to love her for life. Now it's time to put up or get out. Women have to feel loved. This is the soul of woman. Whether she was born that way or brainwashed that way by fairy tales, this is what all the psychobabble ever written by women about love comes down to. Her entire motivation is to be loving to you so you will be loving to her so if you want to win the game of love, love her like she wants to be loved by showing her attention and giving her commitment every single day of your life. Man thrives on achievement and adventure. Woman just needs to feel loved. If she doesn't have it, She's sad as evident by all the single women out there, most of whom are sad unlike single men, many of whom are very happy to be single. Many women in relationships are not loved and they feel it. Typically, a good relationship emotionally is when the woman gives 75% of the emotional energy, the guy 25%. If she gives any more than that, she starts to feel she's giving too much and not getting enough returns so she quietly turns on the guy get sad and angry on the inside and start self-destructing through negative behaviors which could be anything from neglect, sarcasm and hate for him to anorexia, affairs and taking booze and drugs to relieve the emptiness. If women don't feel loved, many feel empty and fall to pieces, not all though but a lot of them can't be happy without being loved by a guy. You have to give an equitable amount to the relationship which means you have to take care of yourself, Please him in the bedroom and pull your own weight in the practical things, especially if he's the breadwinner paying the bills. Conversely, if you're a guy with a dependent, needy, damaged, immature flake, save yourself, get out before she drags you down and destroys the both of you for a while. Find a girl with some backbone who's not only sexy but knows enough about the real world to take care of things in the household. Be wary if you're excessive in anything outside the home like work, golf, booze, porn, drugs, sports, etc. A mature man balances out his own life with life as a generative family man. Don't become hooked on the externals like money, status, achievement, power, hobbies, etc. at the expense of your role as a nurturing lover and family man. Two masks that men hide behind are machismo and boyishness which lead to the one-dimensional archetype of the immature guy loosely called a mook, a guy who works a job, drinks beer, watches football, talks trashy locker room talk with his buds and is very superficial in general like the fraternity characters in the older movie Animal House starring John Belushi. A real man gets over this brainwashed cultural stereotype to be an honorable, upstanding person responsible to his family, loving them, spending time with them not just watching TV and playing golf on the weekends. Get over these stupid stereotypes they blast us with on TV and in men's magazines all the time. Avoid the usual trap of marriage which is that right after the honeymoon, you settle into your regular role as the worker who goes home and becomes a mook like when you were a kid, having your mother cook your meals, wash your clothes, etc., 
only now it's with your wife who's taken the role over and you accept it, losing all sight of romancing her anymore. You think you've won her over, she's yours and you can go back to being the teenage slob you always were. Don't let her be the mother and ignore your kids. Be a hands-on dad who enjoys raising them. Don't use passive-aggressive or outright aggressive means to disrupt your family because you're having problems at work or in other areas of your life. It's called the kicking the dog syndrome or the frustration aggression hypothesis and it means that when you have stress at work, you can't take it out on the people there because you could get fired or lose all your good workers so you come home and take out your frustrations there because you know they will take it. If you're really angry, work it off by jogging, lifting weights or something. Don't take your anger out on the innocent people who love you, your family. In the same vein, don't use the bedroom as a symbol of your masculinity. Don't try to conquer your wife with one-dimensional aggressive conquest sex. Be a gentle lover. Help fulfill her needs by doing whatever it takes to get her off which often means to lick her clitoris until she comes. Try hashtag 395.52 or HF5389 at the library, hashtag 643.7 for entertaining. Chapter 2 Gentleman Info Chivalry Info Speak the truth. Show valor. Stand up for weaker people. Be generous to a stranger. Keep silent when you feel like bragging. Be kind. Chivalrous qualities are Truth Honor Justice Valor Prowess Loyalty Largess Courtesy Nobility Humility 21SDCenturyChivalry.com Gentlemen One-Liners Chivalry is the medieval concept of knighthood, the noble and gentlemanly warrior and lover. A lot of men are purposely not chivalrous as a response to women claiming they want their independence. Guys say you want to be equal, okay, I was here first, I'm not letting you go in front of me just because you're a woman. Don't talk on your cell phone for longer than a minute when you're with someone. Facebook is for bored people. Live your life doing things, not posting crap on Facebook like updating your cover photo. Who really gives a crap? Don't post silly things there. Be tough. Don't whine. Don't swear. Know what's going on. Be kind and courteous. Gentlemanly deportment is like later like deportment. Even if you're right, it's not worth an argument or fight most of the time unless it's a really big deal like changing the world. Try not to say man at the end of statements. Respect people at their level. Be honest. Get friends by being one. Put people at ease. Earn the trust and respect of people by being respectable. Treat people well. Do favors for people. When in doubt, don't share too much. Show reserve. Don't talk too much. Keep emails respectful, not terse, and short. Poor emails make a bad impression. Don't wear headphones if out with friends. Keep a modest ringtone. If somebody does something bad to you in traffic, forget about it. If you confront them, they will always act like they didn't realize they did a bad thing. Respond to people who contact you. Poor grammar and spelling reveal the real you. Too many online photos of you show vanity. Be clean. Groom yourself. Don't brag. Gentlemen website slash chivalry websites. Books on etiquette are at number 395 at the library. 4th lovefmen.com h-of-chivalry.com All that's evil.net newadvent.org slash cathin slash 03691.htm catholicity.com slash mccloskey slash gentleman.html chivalrybookshelf.com chivalrynow.net 10000 besides.com slash mindfreak slash 2492 slash a hyphen guide hyphen to hyphen chivalrous hyphen behavior. Askmen.com. En.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash chivalry. Chivalrytoday.com. Etiquette intl.com. 
knightsanddharma.com slash chivalry.htm ehow.com, how to be chivalrous.